Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to analyze a heart rhythm. So let's get started. So to do this you want to use an EKG strip that's at least six seconds long. And how you know if you have a six second strip is you're going to count those large squares and count 30 squares. 30 squares equals six seconds. And we're going to go through a check off of questions that we're going to answer and based on the answers we get we're going to take that information and apply it to what kind of rhythm we're dealing with. So the first thing you want to look at are the P waves. And we're thinking of the three R's. We're thinking of regularity of those P waves, the rate, and the resemblance. First, regularity. Ask yourself, are the P waves occurring at the same regularity as the consecutive P waves on that EKG strip? And the P waves represent atrial. So with your calipers, you can start at the first P wave, spread it out to the second P wave, and just go from P wave to P wave and make sure that they're all lining up the same distance. If you don't have calipers, you could use some paper. Then look at the rate of those P waves. Count the P waves within that six second strip, then multiply by 10, and this is the atrial rate. The atrial rate should be around 60 to 100 beats per minute for normal sinus rhythm. Then the resemblance, how do they look? Do they resemble a P P wave, how a P wave should look, because there should be only one P wave in front of every QRS complex. So is that happening? Are all the P waves identical and how they're round pointing up? And are they less than 0.12 seconds, less than three squares? So look at the P wave and count those squares underneath. Then apply the three R's to the QRS complex. Look at the regularity of the QRS complex. Are the QRS complexes occurring at the same regularity as the consecutive QRS complexes within that strip? This represents ventricular. You can do this by taking your calipers, just how you did with the P waves and going from R wave to R wave. Both the atrial and ventricular rhythm, the regularity should be regular in order for it to be normal sinus rhythm. And that shows that it's originating in the SA node. Then look at the rate of that QRS complex within that six second strip and count those complexes and multiply by 10. This is the ventricular rate. And the atrial rate and the ventricular rate should be the same, around 60 to 100 beats per minute for normal sinus rhythm. And lastly, resemblance. How do they look? Do they look like QRS complexes? Is there one present after each P wave? They don't measure any more than 0.12 seconds, so less than three boxes. Then look at your T wave. It should come after the QRS complex, be round in the upright position in most leads, and then find the extras within the PQRS T complex, those intervals and segments. So look at the PR interval, measure it. Again, it starts at the beginning of the P wave and extends to the beginning of the QRS complex. It should be 0.12 to 0.20 seconds and the measurement should be uniform throughout that strip. Then look at the ST segment. It starts at the end of the S wave and stops at the beginning of the T wave. It should be flat, no elevation or depression. And then lastly, look at the QT interval, which starts at the beginning of the QRS complex and ends at the end of the T wave. Confirm that it measures between 0.35 to 0.44 seconds. So now let's analyze this rhythm using those questions that we just went over. So I have a six second strip here. And the first thing what we wanna look at are those P waves. So we're gonna look at the three R's of the P waves, the regularity. We're gonna start at the first P wave and we're gonna take our calipers. We're gonna put one point of our calipers on that P wave and then we're gonna stretch the other part out so it touches the next P wave. And then what we're gonna do is just go down through the strip and make sure they're all, they have the same distance within them. So here we go. Making sure that they line up. And so far, they have the same distance. Okay, they are regular. Next, we're going to look at the rate. So what we're gonna do, since we have a six second strip, we are going to count the P waves and then multiply by 10 and that's our atrial rate. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight times 10 is 80, so we have an atrial rate of 80. Now let's look at their resemblance. Do these resemble P waves? And they do, they are round, they are upright, there's only one P wave in front of a QRS complex. And their duration, let's make sure that they're less than 0.12 seconds. So we're just gonna take our calipers, measure at the beginning of that P wave, and at the end of the P wave, and it's about two and a half boxes, so we get 0 0.10 seconds. And then just to confirm that measurement, just go throughout all the other P waves and just make sure that they all line up with that measurement. Now let's look at the QRS complexes. 
the three R. So first, regularity. So just like with the P waves, we're gonna take one end of our calipers, put it on the R wave of the QRS, and then put it on the other R wave of the QRS, and then just track it down through the strip, making sure that they line up together and that they are regular. And so far, they look regular and they are regular. Next, let's count the rate. So count each QRS complex and then multiply by 10. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight times 10 is 80. So we have a ventricular rate of 80, just like the atrial rate. And then lastly, the resemblance. Do these resemble QRS complexes? Are they where they're supposed to be? You're supposed to have one QRS complex after each P wave. They do and they look like QRS complexes, and let's measure them. So what we're gonna do is we're going to measure at the beginning of the QRS complex to the end right here with our calipers. And when you measure it out and you count the boxes, you get two and a half boxes, which is about 0 0.10. And then just go down through the strip and just measure to just confirm. Then look at the T waves. Make sure there's a T wave present after every QRS complex and that it looks like a T wave. It's where it's supposed to be, it's upright. And then lastly, we wanna look at the extras. So let's look at that PR interval. And again, you measure that by going at the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex and measure out the boxes. Here we have about three and a half boxes. So it's 0.14 seconds. And then you just wanna go throughout your strip and you just want to measure that and make sure that all your PR intervals line up to be that same measurement. Then you want to take a look at the QT interval and again that was found at the beginning of the QRS complex to the end of the T wave and you just want to count the boxes from there to there. Here we have about nine boxes so that gives us 0.36 seconds and just track that down all throughout the strip and just confirm you have that throughout. And then lastly, we just wanna look at the ST segment and make sure that the ST segment, which again is found at the end of the QRS complex to the beginning of the T wave, just making sure that this area is flat, it's not elevated or depressed more than one millimeter. And here that is not. So with all those questions that we just answered, whenever we look at this rhythm, it meets all the criteria for normal sinus rhythm with a rate of 80 beats per minute. Okay, so that wraps up this video. And if you'd like to watch more videos on ECG interpretation, you can access the link in the YouTube description below.